So we've seen when component did update is called in the React lifecycle of a given component, but we haven't seen that we can also have access to the previous props and previous state inside of component did update. If we wanted to have some logic that did comparisons between what the old props were and the new props or what the old state was and the new state, all we do is write our method component did update to accept two arguments, prev props and prev state. So if we come over to this to-do list, which we made a couple sections ago, I'm using it as an example because uh, we have a lot of state changing, we have a lot of props changing and re-renders, so it's a slightly more complicated, somewhat realistic example. So if we come to the to-do list component, this component is going to be updated any time we call set state on the to-dos. So a new to-do is made, it's updated. A new to-do, or a to-do is edited, it's updated. A to-do is removed, it's also setting the state. So if we come somewhere in here and do component did update, and then inside of it, the first parameter is going to be previous props or old props, it's up to you, but the first thing that will be passed through, whatever you name it, will be the old props, and then the previous state. So let's console.log something like component did update, and then afterwards, let's do previous state dot to do's because that's the thing that's going to be changing here there's not many props are there any props no there are no props that should be changing in the main to-do list parent and then also console.log this dot state dot to do's so we'll have access to the old state and then something changed in order to trigger the update the re-render and all of that and then we'll have access to the current state so let's open up our console and let's make a new to do walk cat in component did update, we can see the old state was an empty, or the old to dos in the state was empty. Now there's something in it. Um, same thing if we edit it. Let's change it to say walk dog. And you can see it's been updated again. It used to be walk cat was the only item. Now the only item is walk dog. All right. Same thing if we delete something, it's once again triggered. Here we have the array before of to-dos and the array after in our state is empty. But this is not the only place where something is being updated. This is where the state is being set, which is triggering an update. As we saw here, set state causes an update, a re-render, and then component did update is run. But we can also do that when we pass in new props. So let's go to the to-do component itself, which is right here, to-do JS. And let's also add in, let's just copy over what we had, component did update. But this time, when we pass it in, let's print in, let's do to do component did update rather than to do list. And then instead of the state, let's work with the props, prev props, this dot props. And instead of dot to do's, what do we have passed in in the props? It's really just the ID and the task. So let's print out the task. And then here, let's do prev props dot task. And we should see those props will change sometimes. And this is going to be kind of confusing. If I show you what happens right now. So we add our first to do in, hello. And we get the, uh, the parent component updating. Now, if I click edit, you would think nothing has been updated yet. But remember the way edit works on here is that what we're actually doing is setting the state to hide and show this form. So we set the state in that component when I click the button each time, and we're simply printing out the props, even though the state is what changed. However, if I do edit this and I change it to say something else, take a look at that. It is updating over and over and over. Why is that happening? So let's change this to be LOL and hit save. And we can see here, is what we probably expected. The component updated when new props were passed in. When I hit save and I changed it to LOL, that called a function up in the parent, which then set the state in the parent, which caused a re-render of the child, passed in new props, which is what we see here. In addition, the parent updated because the parent state changed, which is what we see here. But what about all of these where the props aren't changing? Well, those have to do with a couple of things. One is the fact that we have a form in there. And remember, our form has this event, where are you, handle change, 
that is setting the state anytime that input changes. So anytime I type in that edit form right here, if I edit it, anytime I type a single character, this component is being updated and re-rendered because that handle change is setting the state. So there's some things you may not have thought about that are changing the state. This is changing our state. Also, when we toggle that form, it's calling set state. And right now we're only printing out the props and sometimes they're not changing even though there is a re-render and componented update is being called again, but that's because the state is changing and we're just not printing the state out. And that's okay, I don't wanna make you watch me print the state out, but you can probably imagine, all right, the state changes right now, and so we get a re-render, and our component did update is called. I click save here, well that's toggling the state, which is the is editing part of the state. That's updated on that component, so we get the same thing again. In addition, when we just click save, we're sending that value up to the parent, which is then setting state in the parent, and we see component did update from the parent. Okay, so to wrap all this up, there's a lot of re-rendering, a lot of updating going on all the time in this to-do application, but if we wanted to write code where we had access to the previous props in the previous state, it's really easy to do. Usually we're not just gonna print it out, but we could add some logic, we can do some comparisons. We might wanna check if nothing changed. There are ways to optimize our application. There are ways to force an update if something didn't happen that you wanted to update. Uh, we'll talk about some of those performance things later on in the course. But for now, I just wanted to show you we have access to that data in component did update.